So I was making these gutters up in the last video, which we need to finish. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But what I have found, which I thought was interesting, follow up on the other video, was I found these, um, which I'd forgotten I had. Uh, these are these, you know, these door receivers. So you remember we made that one in our video and then that's one I made before. And then I found these a long time ago. Someone gave them to me um, in amongst a batch of other bits and pieces. I think it was off an old coach built Alfa Romeo. Um, I'm not even sure if it's off the same car because they're, they're quite different in shape unless it was a four door but i think or it might have had two on them you know it might have had two two of these receivers on the door in the b post no idea but anyway these are hand formed and i thought we'd have a sort of closer look at how these are made um you know because they 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 definitely look to be more hand done uh, there's a degree of markings on them where they may have been stamped but this one's definitely had solder let round it, which we'll have a closer look at. Um, and this one's had a sort of end piece let onto it. So, it, you know, and behind they look quite rough, but on the front they look quite nice. So it's interesting that, you know, this stuff goes on. It sort of, not backs up what I say, but it, 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 it sort of a, it illustrates what we were doing with these and that things sometimes little repairs are done at the factory or at the coach builders whoever's doing the work and then once they're finished you don't even know they're there well you know that's so it's just like when i'm making them you know this is the way of it so yeah i thought that was intriguing but yeah we'll have a we'll have, you know we'll have a look at these and see and then we'll get into this gutter thing these appear as if they're stamped out because they've got these little lines around them like we were looking at before on the original ones of those. So again I can see these sort of marks on them there but there's definitely solder in the corner here going up and around and across here. So down in, into this corner here there's quite a lump of solder and it feels like there's a sort of ridge on there. So I think this piece has been let on the end here. So I think this is one stamping I think that's the same, that's the stamping. So I think they're the same stampings. And they, they probably knock a load of them out and then trim them to suit round here. And you can see here, this one's got a piece let on the end here. You can see that's, that's a separate piece of metal that and through here. So, but you know, once it's done, you can see that, you, you know, you can't see that there's a join there. It's only on, on the back where they haven't finished it, which you don't need to finish the back which is good for me because I can see how things are made so that's intriguing so these are off an Alfa Romeo this is the Maserati one that I made so this is this one's going to go with this car actually and that was the, the one we were doing the film of making and I said it split in the corner so I repaired it in here with a bit of solder and in there and then linished it up so it shows that you know that that sort of stuff was what was going on now I think this is where they joined that on. I don't think it's to repair it, uh, you know, or it might be because they felt they couldn't do it like that in one go. But I suspect they had a blank. They were using these as blanks, this part, and then making them accordingly. Although these holes do seem in a different position, but that could have been done on a separate bit of tooling, much like I did. So I just thought it was interesting um, to pick up one just about how these things were made in modern or back in the day. So, yeah, so they, they, you know, they're coach built, come out of coach builders. I say modern, I don't know where these were made. They're Alfa Romeo, probably Milan. But yeah, there we are. So, um, yeah. Right, let's move back on to some actual work. I'll put these over here and get on. So to make these little returns up, or, um, which become the little locators, uh, you know, these little tangs that will be, um, hold these trims on. We use a little bit of brass sheet. Uh, I've marked it out roughly what we want. I use this little guillotine, um, rather than the big one, it's a lot easier to use. It's a lovely little tool, uh, come from an old friend of mine, Graham, who sadly passed away many years ago, but um, he's a wonderful engineer, very talented. Uh, and he was always very encouraging of what I was doing, so it was quite nice. So. These will be the little back, little square ones on the back. 
um, I'll chop that out and get two of them out of that and this will be the one at the front uh, I've already cut a piece off here which enabled me to make one of them so if I cut through you know that gives me the angle so I'll double up as it were so if I show you that was that so we got that one straight out of there if you see that come from there anyway um, it was like that anyway right so we won't put that hole in because it's this one's going to be for the other side I know that's in the right place but when we get on the other side I'd like to pick up on the hole that's in the bodywork rather than drilling new holes in the bodywork which means sort of a bit reverse engineering but we'll work that out so I can drill that in when I've got this done but these I can punch in, punch in with a Whitney punch because you know I can uh, so we'll do that so if I just put a little center dot in here sort of match the other one a little automatic center punch it's a great little tool for this and then we've got a we've got, got no, the smaller Whitney punch we're using on this remember we were using the bigger one last time on those um, door receiver you know, catch things so when you use a Whitney punch we've got a we've got this little pimple in the end here just at the end of the punch there there's a pimple and if we can use that and we put it on the center dot we can pick up on that center dot there it's located in it and now we know we're punching in the right place so they're, they're great tools and a lot quicker than messing around with the drill so there we are that's done so i already marked this out in pencil i didn't bother with a scribe but that will that will suffice for what we're doing so get this up in here line that up There you go, that's done, it's on the floor, we'll pick it up in a minute. And then we can do the same with this one. But this is where it's great because it's a tiny little tool, so you can sort of, you know, the big guillotine, you, you, you really struggle with this little stuff feeding it in there. Um, and yeah, we do need a guard on it, but that'll, um, that'll come, otherwise you end up sort of losing a digit. <laughs> we don't want that. Right. So we can just take this little corner off on there and we should be fine. Right. There we go. So that's that one. So that will become the reverse of this one for the other side. So it's just efficient to make you know double up on things when you're making them so that's that one that's the one for this side and somewhere <laughs> we lost that other bit where's that gone oh well, there you go can't find it <laughs> i have to make another one then <laughs> right okay Right, we'll just true that up. If we've got to make another one, we'll just true, true this up so it's squared up. And see if we can manage to not lose it this time, eh? Right, that's that. Yeah, we'll get a second go at using the Whitney punch and showing what we do. There you go, line that up with that pimple. Now, better mark this off. <clears throat> okay. Now, I'm going to struggle to hold that like that, but I could have a go. What I'll do is I'll use that to hold on to it. That way I haven't got my fingers too close to it. And that way, hopefully, 
the scrap will go rather than our piece goes the other side. There we go. So that's it. We want two of them, so we're probably going to cut that in half. So then we'll lose it again, won't we? Anyway, right, let's see. So we go across there and that. So, and what we're making is these, isn't it? So it's one of those. And that's the end. And right now we're making these little bits for this end, you see? And they'll have to be silver soldered on. But yeah, so you see what we're doing. Right, let's do this. Well, we're going to lose one of these, but at least we'll have one for the actual job we're doing. We'll find the other one later on. There we go. Right, that's what we're working with. That's what we need for those. And... Okay, let's get to it and actually make it. So we've got to make these ends up here, um, these returns. So we're looking at this, you know, how this, this does this lovely curved gentle return. I've started on this one, trimming it to how we need it. So we'll get that off and have a look, because we'll have to hammer that over. So, so yeah, so what we're dealing with is is that end so you can see I've cut through in here well I've cut my one to sort of match that so you can see we've got we've got this bit here which is that and then we've got to allow enough material to gradually form it over and that's the plan so I've made a bit of tooling up to work it over which is this which will we'll clip in like that we'll clamp that down and we should be able to knock that over and give us a nice little return that's the plan. So I've just got a bit of plate up and then leash it up to suit. Uh, we'll see how this goes. I think it'll move quite easily without kneeling. You know, it's not like those little um, catches we were making where it's split. You know, we're not asking that to do too much, that bit of metal. But let's see what we can do. So that's what we're trying to get. I'll put this over here so it doesn't end up on the floor. And then we'll see what we can do. I think we need to clamp this bit of plate down. And then I think we'll clamp that to the plate. I think we want to do something like that. So, right, need that over the edge a bit more, I think. Right, let's get that over the edge of the bench a bit. So, right, so that's got that. What we're trying to do is get this to clamp it in between the two, you see, and whilst we knock it over. We've got to allow enough material to go around there. I think that'll probably do it. Let's see what we got. Now this might mark it a bit, the brass, but I'm not too worried because we're going to have to linish it up quite a lot anyway yet. So I'm not going to fret over that. It's more important we get this shape right and then, you know, it'll probably need a bit of filing and whatever anyway. So, right, it's a good start. A bit of a divot in there we need to get out. Right, we can probably trim that up a bit. A little go over the file. Let's see what it looks like compared to the other one. See how we're shaping up. So yeah. Yeah, I reckon that'll just about do it, won't it? Looks about the right shape. You can see how mine are deeper than these ones. But I think we need it a bit deeper to get to take it out. I think otherwise it's gonna end up too shallow. And we'll end up with some of that actual gutter on the car poking out underneath it. Right, I'll grab a file and we'll finish that off. Okay. 
And it gives us a good shape, I think. That's sort of what we're looking for. And so it looks a bit deeper, doesn't it? It looks it looks a bit more clumsy, this one, than that one, because it's deeper. But I think we're going to want that. We're going to want that depth on it. We'll pop it on the car and see what it looks like. Let's see how we're faring. Well, yeah, so there we are. That's what we're going to get. So that's how it's going to look, and it's going to finish like that. And then that little tang we were making up, that little securing piece, is going to end up in here, you see, something like that. So you see that hole lines up. So we'll, I think we'll trial fit that up. And we'll, um, yeah, get that set up. I think if we get this soldered on, it'll give us a good datum to work to. I think that'd be a good idea. Um, Yeah, we'll see. Maybe not just yet. Maybe not. Maybe we'll do a bit more first. Let's have a look. Want this just right, you know, so we want to make sure we are right. Once you solder something on, you're stuck. So let's have a look at that. Yeah, I don't know if it's a bit deep, this end. It's almost like it, almost like it's thicker, this end than this end, isn't it? I think we ought to measure that <laughs> before we go much further. Can't find a vernier gauge, so we'll use this. These will work. Same thing, remember we were looking at these last week, how we use these. So I guess if we do that, we'll see, won't we? So that's that. Yes, it does, uh, not much, not enough in it, but I thought the eye's tricking me, I think. There's a bit on there, isn't there? So it does, it does seem a bit thicker this end. We'll soon, soon finish that down, I think, and lose that. But it's, it's tiny, it's tiny, but I thought it didn't look quite right. Anyway, I ain't gonna worry too much about that. Let's work out. <coughs> yeah. Let's take that off. And then we'll work out about fitting that one. I'm getting the datum about right. So there isn't much in it. But it's definitely you don't want to do too much mucking about because then we lose that nice straight edge along the edge but anyway let's finish a bit of that off Right, oops. Okay, that looks a bit better already. I can finish this off a bit because I've got to do a lot of filing on it. That'll do, that does look a bit better. And so I need this the right height before I solder that on. Um, let's just get a bit off the top here. So that we... Right, that looks good. Let's just make sure we've got that about right on the end here. What have we got here? All right in here. Yeah. So this is deeper here, but I don't think we need to worry too much about that. This edge is all right. Um, I think we've got enough depth there. We'll see how we go. But yeah, so we've got to fit this on now. So let's go get that. It's got to end up on there to match that one, which means we're going to have to back mark it and then cut it so it sits in. So this actually sits inside here. You can see sort of the solder there. So that that needs to sort of sink up into there. So we'll um, have to mark that off and then cut it accordingly. So let's have a go at that. Right, screw that on there. That'll give us something to work with. And we've got to work out how, how far forward we want the whole thing. So they were, as I say, we use the original screw holes. Don't want to drill, drill new holes in the car. And this is part of why I put that windscreen seal on it. I'll put a new windscreen seal on this this morning, um, partly because it turned up. 
but also so that we can um, see where all this sort of stuff sits and lines up and, and so on. It makes it a lot easier. If I do this without the windscreen seal in there and the windscreen fitted properly, we, we might get a sort of false reading of how it all sits. So that's about what that does. And then we can get an idea of where that comes to. So I think that that one yeah that's sort of what we want so we get a scribe we mark that now I say we want this to sit underneath the edge so we'll cut that and then we've got to remember to linish enough off of there or cut enough off of there so it will recess up in. Let's do that now. So we can go just inside that line because we want to um, clean a bit, don't we? So that's that, we'll lenish it up. Look at all this. There you are, all them filings. Now, when I was working at the jewellers back in the day, all that, you'd save all that. That would. Um, hoover it all up and everything that was hoovered up would get processed back into scraps of scrap gold and silver and so on and you know a lot of jewelers back in the day would have actually grates outside the door so before you walked out the door you used to have to jump up and down so all the dust would fall off you and that's why jewelers wear turnips because then you can fill your turnips up with dust and gradually gradually you can you can build it up into a small fortune <laughs> anyway, there we are. So, that's what we're going for, isn't it? Okay, let's see what it looks like on here. So, yeah, we're, we're aiming for it to sit underneath it like that. That's it. Yeah, so that's what you want. You want a nice tight fit, otherwise what will happen is when you um, try to solder it, you'll be trying to gain it all with the solder. So what we'll do now, we, we'll trial for this on here, and that will give us a datum to work to, because we've got to do the same at the back, haven't we? But we've got to cut the back to where we want it. Right, so I'm happy with that. But what we've got to do, we've got to work out what we're doing up the back end now, haven't we? So, that, I think, will work. I think we're going to be all right with that. But I've got to mark the back up. So, Okay, that'll do for the minute. I'm going to have to get the um, gas bottles around here and start soldering out, I reckon. Right, so we've got to fit this one onto the end here. And we've got to solder it on. Now that's where it's going to come to. I just marked that on the car. Here's a set of jeweler's tweezers, which we can use to hold it. And we want to sit that just in about something like that. But what we need now is we need to hold these jeweler's tweezers in place whilst whilst we do this so we're going to need to fit these to this now what we need for that is a bit of binding wire which um, we'll have to make some so we'll go next door and use the lathe and make some up in a minute but yeah that'll do and then we can solder that on I think once this soldered on we can get a datum for the other end that's what I want to do anyway so next job is next door make up some binding wire Right, onto the Myford, so I can make some binding wire up. Now, 
is another lovely old machine um, come off my friend Graham. So quite a lot of my stuff come from him. So it's sort of nice to think about, you know, remember these people when you um, get to use this stuff. You know, I always think of him when I get, you know, anything I do on this. Right, before we go much further, I have to change the jaws because we want to fit this in. So what set of jaws these will do? Yeah, they'll do. Right, okay, let's move the bed out. I'll take the tail stock off because we don't going to need that. That'll be in our way a bit for what we're doing. So that can go down there. Um, jaws. Right, those will do. Right, so we've got a one. Two. Three. Right, okay. So we can take that little look out. And then you can see what we, why we had to change the door, jaws was because these, uh, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't clamp down on the hook. So I was talking about them being numbered. So there you go, there's number one. There's three, so yes, yeah, so it goes, goes clockwise. So one, two, and three. So let's show you what it looks like when you take them out. So there's a, it's a sort of scroll thread in here and that's what it's all about. So number, number three will come out first. I think, if I remember rightly. No, it won't be number one without the first one. Out. So you can see the scroll going round. There you go, one's come out. So look, you see, see the beginning of the scroll there. Now that's what you've got to line up, otherwise you get them all out of line and they won't, won't go together when you scroll it out. So if I come back round, there you go. All right, so they're all out. So let's have a look. So we wanted one in first, don't we? So one goes in there. So you've got to pick up on that scroll. You see, it won't fit in there. You've got to go back on it a bit. There's one. There you go. It's two. And you've got to get them in order, otherwise it all goes very wonky. Two. Then three. There you go, you can see how they all draw in together. Oh, it's not, is it? <laughs> it didn't pick up on it, let's go back. There you go, right. In there, right. There you go. No, that's it. Doesn't like it, does it? Hold on, what's going on here? Right. That's it. Right, so I'm going to fit this little look in here. That will do. And then we've got to make up some binding wire, which is basically twisting this together. Now this is another old thing we used to do at the jewellers. So you need this for um, doing various operations with soldering and joining things together. Um, so I used to have to make reams of this up because I used to, to keep all the jewellers busy on their benches with all the um, part make everything they used to do um, and then make up bits of binding wire and whatever else was required whatever else they needed I had to sort of do, and then sort out the assay, sending it all off for hall marking and so on. Um, and yeah, all sorts of stuff I used to do. It was good, it was good, but I needed it for a little while and then <laughs> back into the motor trade. But there we are, couldn't get the grease from underneath my fingers, that was the trouble. But there we are, I don't mind. I actually quite like the motor trade. I like this end of it though, doing vintage cars and so on. Right, so turn that on. And off we go. Now, if you want to make a longer bit, you need someone to turn it on and off for you. <laughs> this will do more than enough for what we're doing. 
So all we're doing is binding two bits of wire together to make a little rope effectively. Just means it bites in better when you're doing stuff. So there you go, you see what we got. And then we can use that to wrap them tweezers on whilst we hold them. And that'll do. So that's that little job. Right, you need the gas bottles round in now. I don't know if it'd been easier to take the car to the gas bottles actually. <laughs> take all the work around there. Right, so got a bit of winding wire. So what we're gonna try and do is get this to stay in about the right place where we want it. These are always awkward. But you know, we should be able to do it. Right, I reckon that'll do it. Okay. Right, let's get a bit sold ready. Um, you need to find that silver solder and the flux and then we will get that stuck on there. That's the plan. And we'll just mix up a little bit of flux for it. And I think we'll be all right. I don't know why they send it in these little packets. Looks like it's something nefarious. My brother-in-law said it looked like it come from Colombia. I said, I don't, they don't make it in Colombia. Anyway, there you are. So we've got that set up quite nicely. The only trouble is when you touch it with the heat, sometimes it moves. So let's hope for the best, eh? Um, a little bit of flux on the rod as well. Might not need that, but let's do it anyway. So that's the silver solder that we used before. Uh, it does come in, in thinner sticks if need be. But I think for what we're doing, this will just about suffice. And this torch is probably a little bit fierce for it, to be honest. Um, I could probably be better off with a, with a little micro welder, but I haven't got a micro welder, we'll have to use this. Uh, so I'll try and get it as a cooler flame, but I think what I've got to do is just move quick. Yeah, you want to get enough on there that it sticks, but not so much that it takes forever filing it off. But there we go. We don't want it breaking off when it gets up to the polishers, do we? I think we're almost there. Now, I'm not trying to blow it to make it cool. I'm trying to blow the smoke away so I don't breathe too much of this stuff in. Well, it's certainly got a nice blob behind there, so it's got some on there. That should have a bit of stiction to it, shouldn't it? Yeah, I reckon that'll do. Right, good. Right, let's get this binding wire off. 
and our tweezers off and then we'll finish that up and see what we got but I reckon that'll be all right it's quite a nice blob of silver on there probably more than you need but as I say we don't want it falling off you imagine getting a call when it gets up to the polishers and ooh, it's falling off so yeah right that's that So that other stuff, all them filings was brass, so this actually is mainly silver. So as I say, you should collect it really. But I don't do enough of it to make that worth the bother. Right, that'll do for now, but we'll get the file on it. So we're gonna have to do a fair bit of finishing off this later on. But let's just take the rest of it down with a file, just to smarten it up a bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, we said about these sort of pimples that have come out from when I was using the box and pan folder. Well, this is one of them. So that's the sort of thing we've got to linish up. So. And our shrinker marks. But you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do with plenty of that later. But this is the sort of thing we've got to work it right the way through like this to get this just right. Which is why I'm not gonna do any more with that end at the moment. What we'll do, we'll trial fit it in place. And I think we'll, you know, see what we got. Now, okay, let's try that. Pops on there quite nice. That lines up all right. So yeah, spot on. Get a screw in there, we'll hold that, then we can start working out what to do with the other end so we get it about the right place. Let's get a screw, pop that in there. So yeah, I reckon that's gonna work. So yeah, I think that looks quite nice. Don't forget this trim comes up here and covers over some of this. You know, this 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 um, A post trim. So we've got to trim this back edge up to where we want it, and we've got to well, you know, solder that little tang on that goes in there. Um, if I find a scriber, well. There's a scriber. So yeah, that's gonna go in there, isn't it? In that little hole there. So that tang is gonna get soldered on there, which was those little tangs we made earlier, which is one of these. It was this thing, wasn't it? We was gonna use one of those. So that's gotta go in there effectively, but lower down, so we'll only need to trim it and so on. Same sort of little op operation we we're doing before. But before we mess around with that, I think we should try and get this edge dealt with, this, this curve on the back here. So that's why we got it. Now we've got the front marked, we know where we want the back. And that's why I wanted to do that. So we had a datum to work from. So if we look at the, that one, we lay that over the top and see where that comes to. And I reckon that one I reckon this one, if we marked it at the front, I reckon that'd be too short. Which is exactly why I say that, you know, you need to make these two the car to get them just right. So, you know, we want that to end up, it's about where I marked it before, actually. That's where we want it, you know, maybe a bit back from there. We don't want it too far over because we don't want it, we don't want it interfering with this, you know, this lot. It doesn't want to overhang. So, let's have a look. So I think, we're going to need it finish about there and it's got to sort of curl round. This one curls round quite a lot, you can see. It curls around a lot more than the front, it's all it appears to. So, and it's a bit free at the end, isn't it? So, you know, to get this sort of ball shape, we've got quite a bit more work to do. But that's where we want it to end up and we've got to allow for it to curl round there. Now it seems to start, if that's where it ended, 
if you look at that down there so that's that's that ends there that's that end there and it curls it starts to curve a bit further from here so that is about there and it curls around and then folds right around there so we've got to allow that's where we're going to be starting our curve now we don't want it to, you know that's that's the gutter below so it can't it can't start before that but it ends to gently curve around there so we need to allow enough metal so, so that's a sort of curve around and then to curl back there. So we won't be cutting it there, we'll be cutting it back here. But we've also got to take this bit out from the inside, this part here, before we can do any of that. And we've got to take a bit off the top, not too much off the top, because obviously you need, need that metal there, don't you? You need material there. But we'll have a look at that in a minute. Right, so we're going to look at the other end now, so that we're happy with that. So what we've got to do is do this stuff the other end. So we've got to, we've got to you know, we're trying to do this thing here. So we've got to do this cut out there and where this folds around, which is what we just talked about. So we need to work out where we're... So we were saying that it's going to end there at that point. And that's obviously allowing for it to curl around. So that's the end bit. So we're going to take that as that reference point there. So this is where it's going to end. We're not going to cut it down to there because remember we're folding it round. But we can take this as a, as a datum for there, can't we? So we've got to allow for we've got to allow that we've got to have material there for that, haven't we? For where that goes. So if we take this out from there and then go up something like that with it, but we're not cutting that off there. We're going to cut it off more here. So that's what we're going to take off there, that bit. So I'm going to take this piece off. And what I'll do is I'll get a saw for that because it'll be easier than snips. So we just take this first bit off with the saw and then we can come back with the snips for the other bit. Right, so some snips. So we come in here like that about that angle and then we want to come along from the top don't we something like that and then I might just use the little linisher to make that a bit neater So, what we're trying to do is we, that's where we're saying it's ending. We've got to curl this round so we can probably get rid of that material because we don't want to be trying to move too much of that, do we? So we can take that bit off the end there, I think. Just through there. Let's just take that off there. So we're not trying to move too much stuff around at the same time. <laughs> right, oh. So, so we used that end up the end here, didn't we? We used that end up that end, gave us about that shape. We're going for a shallower one on this back bit. So I've made that appropriate accordingly. So we're going to want to put that in there and clamp it in place. And we want to sort of, you know, we're sort of talking about coming back, weren't we, from it curls over slowly, so it's going to come over from about there and then end up down there. So I think we've still got way more material than we need on the end of that. Um, looking at that, that's not we're not going to need all that, are we? Let's get a bit more of that out of the way because we don't want to keep moving stuff that we don't want. Because um, it's a lot of energy and it could allow it to crinkle up a bit because I think these will tend to try and rise up a bit so yeah I'm just going to nib that off okay let's have a go at that so I'm going to put it in like that we need to clamp that down don't we
So remember, we're trying to get this more shallow curve on this, aren't we? I think it's going to be something like that. Yeah. See, it's more like that, isn't it? Let's just see what it looks like on the car, I think. Let's try it. So you remember, that's our datum up this end. We've got to get that in the right place first. And then we hope that that's going to end up about right. That ain't too bad, is it? It's not too bad. It's, 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 we've got too much metal on there, which we knew about. But I think we got about the right shape. So we're going to be wanting to come off there a bit. So I think take a bit off that corner. We're not looking too bad. I'll take that off with a linisher. See, I reckon that looked quite good. I'm just going to try this a bit in here manually because I think we need a bit more. That needs to come round a bit more, just on this very far end. Too bad, is it? We need a bit more. We need to come over a bit on the top more, I think. We need to come over a little more and you know, curl around there a bit. And then we've got to sand it straight, haven't we? Um, that isn't looking too bad. Follow that up a little, I think. Right, let's try that one. so I think that looks pretty good let's give it a little tap down into shape so you see it comes down here low enough to cover the gutter see I don't think these are too deep shaping up quite well. Right, so we've got these little lumps and things on here. We're going to fold these up, which we spoke about before, didn't we? But you can see we're getting the shape. We're getting the shape. I mean, that can be done on the car, as we haven't got a finished painted car we can do a lot of work actually on it when I was doing that silver car we had it painted and I had to trial fit them onto this one 
because I couldn't be filing them up like this on there, could I? Not when it's finished the paint. See, it highlights them as you file them. You can see where we're getting rid of the high spots and so on, the low spots. We'll get it all just right, but we'll need a bit of filing up. Yeah, so we're getting there, aren't we? I reckon we've got it just about. Um, yeah, I think that's going to work. We've got to put that other tang on there. Um, then I can properly fit it on and then we can file up a bit more. But I think we're, I think we're looking good. I reckon that'll do. So, yeah, that was it, wasn't it? So, yeah, it's deeper. But I think we want it deeper. I think if it's too shallow, it wouldn't look quite right. And I think, you know, once we get that filed up a bit more, I think that's going to look okay. Um, I think too thin, and we'll see be too much of this edge poking down, you know, poking out from underneath. And it seems to fit quite well in there. You know, I think, I think that's, um, you know, I don't think that's too deep in there. I think that'll be fine. I mean, I might stick these on with a bit of sticker flex when it's done as well, just to you know, make sure they stay on there nicely, which is what I did with the other car. So yeah, so I think, I think we're gonna be all right with that. Um, I think, you know, I think it's deeper, but I think it needs to be. I think otherwise we're gonna, you see like this, you see how that's starting to show underneath there? I think we're going to have too much of that. I mean, that will pull down. But, you know, you can imagine if I did that much, you know, more, I think we'd have, um, you know, we'd have that poking out. You know, I don't think that's going to go down. And it does, it goes down. I don't know, we'll have to see. Maybe I've got to trim a bit out there. I'll have a look. It might be when it's filed up, it, it lightens it down a bit anyway, because this has got a bit of curvature around to the top of here. You can see it's sort of, it's rolled over. So the time I fold that over again to sort of follow that curvature, I think, you know, I think that's going to make it look lighter anyway. Well, we'll see, we'll see. I'm quite happy with that. Um, and if we have a look over here quickly, you know, they're fairly heavy, because I had to make it, and I think that looks all right. I don't think that looks over, you know, too heavy at all. I think that looks all right. Um, apart from the finger marks where I've been handling it, but there we are. But yeah, so that's what we're trying to do. And I think that'll, um, you know, that's just like the ones that chap made in Modena, wasn't it? In that picture, Uncle Giuseppe. <laughs> oh, he, he got to do it when he was wearing his vest because it's nice and warm out there. Not, not like it is here, all cold and miserable today. But there we are. So that's that bit done. Um, I'll finish them bits off and we'll have a, we'll have a little, um, take some nice little pictures of it done, I think. But I think that's it. I think that's um, time to go home. Time to say goodnight. <laughs> okay, that'll do.